We have people waiting. There we are. Now we're live. So uh, over there in Dan's movie cave, he's got the Blu-ray version. I've only got yeah. the X-Rent Hall and the retail version on VHS, unfortunately. Yeah, I had the uh, x rental myself. <laughs> Both exactly the same. I think it's probably the same tape as well, by the look of it. But this is Snatch from, when was it? 2000? Surely not. It's 24 years old now. Mm -hmm. When did you first see it? I see this. I wasn't old enough to see it in the cinema, so I was born in 84. So <laughs> I got this. Well, the first time I see it was the X-Rental, and mine actually come in a yellow case. I think they just colour matched it to uh, uh, the yeah. iconic yellow. Yeah. Yeah, missed, missed that one. Uh, but yeah, what's this? Guy Ritchie's second film, isn't it? Yeah. After the lock stock. Oh, which I have here as well as a rental. Mm -hmm. The number one film of 1998, according to The Sun. But well, we'll Definitely. <laughs> it's not as good as Snatch. No. But yeah. Although this is a 2001 film, if you were in America. September 1st, 2000 here in Ireland, Finland. Got it in September. Yeah, then it went all around Europe and the world and got back to America January 19th. And because uh, it wasn't, was it a hit? I don't remember it in the cinemas here. Yeah, I remember the big billboards of it. Um... Hmm. Maybe my I... stepdad's a massive fan of it. We had massive billboards, and it was in the cinema. So my, that was the only film uh, he took my mum to see. That and her previous boyfriend, the only film he took her to see was Lockstock. So. <laughs> 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 All right. <laughs> it's is it a date film? It's, it's entertaining enough, I suppose. No, oh, she really hated old. it. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, budget of six million. It made 83 million worldwide just in the cinema. So it, it was a sizable hit. Mm -hmm. um, but how long is it? It's uh, 99 minutes. There we go. Where is my remote? Never have anything ready. So if you've got yours queued up, yeah. just begin and then oh. check out the chat. Which was a longer version. Um, yeah, it ran my... from 103 minutes. I know the Blu ray's always slightly longer, isn't it? Yeah, it's a couple of minutes. So there we go. Columbia Pictures, a big company. Right. And then, unfortunately, we can't play the, the fantastic soundtrack it's got. Mm hmm. Right, there we are. Uh, so Matthew Vaughan, who went on to be a director himself of many a big budget films as well. Yeah. Who's in the chat? Mike, the real fifth Beatle is here. Evening. The professor's here. Greetings and salutations. Jeff's here. It's a Dutch area now. But evening, uh, evening, Michael Myers. So yes, the uh, Professor Macabre did a uh, spoof of American werewolf earlier with cows and <laughs> European cow werewolves. Yeah. But he was doing some sort of accent. I think it was a uh, sort of uh, Michael My uh, Mike Myers <laughs> Scottish accent. But it was very well done. Um, where am I? He says. I was just doing a high note and a low note to go from to my Scrooge McDuck accent. <laughs> uh, pretty sure the guy bottom right is the taxi driver in American Werewolf. That is true. Uh, Bricktop. What's his name? The actor. Adam Ford. That's him. Yes, he is. He is. Thanks for pointing that out. I did forget about that. He's the one in Piccadilly Circus, isn't he, at the roundabout? Uh, Dwayne's here. Good evening, Dwayne. And then we're caught up. So then we get the all-star cast. 
with yeah. Steve, Scouse Stephen Graham playing a Cockney. Bricktop Very well Ford. And <laughs> Apparently, Bricktop is a uh, someone with ginger hair. So obviously, he was called that from a young age. Uh, Dennis Farani, uh, Farina, who was an uh, ex cop turned actor, Benedicio del Toro, uh, and Vinnie Jones. There we go. <laughs> There's going to be lots of quotes in the chat. This is a dog assault. Yes. It was, uh, <laughs> what's his name? The guy that went on to be in uh, The Walking Dead. Is it Lenny? Yeah. There's Jason Fleming in a small part. Because he was in... This, uh, uh, this part here mm. is actually a nod, nod to Madonna. He's talking about a virgin. <laughs> Who was dating Madonna at this time? Guy Ritchie. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, talking about virgins. Similar to... Is it Reservoir Dogs? Yeah. And a heist. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, he was a gangster who scared Alan Partridge. That's true. But, yeah, he is a dangerous bloke now. So, yes, the Scouser thought uh, Graham's Cockney sounded a bit dodgy. What did you reckon, no. being from the South? I think it's really good. I've, I've seen Cockney accents done like proper butchered, uh, that guy... It was in the new King Arthur film. He's in The Gentleman. I forget his name. But he's like from Newcastle. Charlie Hunter. Right. Oh. Uh, it's, no, no one gets it right. I think Stephen Graham's pretty close. Yeah. Because uh, I watched the making of this earlier. And, of course, off camera, he's a proper scouse. Stealing stuff off yeah. the set and stuff. But, yeah. It's a pretty convincing English accent. He, he's turned out to be a great actor as well. Oh, really yeah. Good. He's done... Really good stuff. Yeah. Let me get there. An actual heist. Who is this in the chat? Your cohort from your podcast and the monthly live streams. <laughs> <laughs> Crystal Palace. That's not Crystal Palace supporter, is he? I thought it was QPR. No. <laughs> QPR. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, Carlos. Anyway, like a virgin, dick, 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 dick. <laughs> Michael Myers has seen this too much. Uh, yes, the famous cockney by Dick, Dick Van Dyke, cockney. No one, he's never going to live that down, even though he's a hundred now on his soul. That's why I won't watch Mary Poppins because of his performance. <laughs> Awful, it's offensive. Yeah, yeah. Plus, the film's two and a half hours long. Oh. Ah, so there you go. I just realised, yeah. Spoiler for the end. Cousin Abby looks at the diamond that they stole at the beginning and then puts it in his safe. So, obviously he does get it. I've never noticed that before all the times I've watched this thing. What's the song? Yeah, and there's Jason Statham. <laughs> who hasn't aged much by the look of this in 24 years. No. Just a little bit more hair in this than normal. Oh, Mike Reed, my favourite comedian. <laughs> he was good. Such a downturn when he went to EastEnders. Oh, <laughs> someone getting their teeth smashed in on a pool table. Oof. So this is an 18. It's got uh, frequent strong sun course language, some nudity, moderate references, and frequent strong bloody violence. But I think is there any nudity in this? Yeah, there is when uh, Bullet Tooth Tony's getting shot six times in the oh, strip, it's a strip club. club, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, what's the it's not like a virgin, it's being sung, it's a Madonna song. You should be my lucky time. star. 
Lucky Star, yes. So that Guy Ritchie paid a million dollars for the rights for that. Even though <laughs> yeah. He was dating her at the time. Yeah. yeah, the headbutt says, you allowed to do that? It's an unlicensed boxing match. It's not a tickling competition. <laughs> Always cracks me up. Uh, two minutes Turkish. It was two minutes, five minutes ago. Uh, all right. A little bit more hair. Yeah, it's about, he's obviously not as built as he is these days. Have you seen The Beekeeper? No, I'm waiting for that to come out on Blu-ray. Ah, yeah. I, I do want yeah, to it see wasn't it. bad. Uh, I like... Uh, I like all his stuff. I just don't like it when he does an American accent because he can't do it. <laughs> What's the worst one he's done? Is it the one with Jet Li when he's, he's supposed to... Oh, the one. To... Yeah. <laughs> and, and Parker, where he's playing the Texan with uh, Jennifer Lopez. I know he's put on in the film, but it's terrible. Yeah. <laughs> two minutes. It was two minutes, five minutes ago. He's and then we get stuff. the <laughs> yeah, the yeah, very offensive term "pikey," because yeah. although everyone does fucking hate pikeys, <laughs> they don't do themselves any favors. Oh yes, he was in Ghost of Mars as well. Runs time was he? Where's my Ghost mm -hmm. of Mars? Might be in the loft. Nope, there it is. Sorry. It's correct. Term title is John Carpenter's Ghost of Mars, like everything he does. Uh, yeah, 2001. So, yeah. After the success of this, Hollywood noticed. And he hasn't looked back, really. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Mike Reed played Frank Butcher just with a Jewish hat. Apparently, there's a story that uh, Mike Reed's widow said that... Uh, Brad Pitt invited both of them to the after party of the premiere, but they didn't go. Because I think yeah. <laughs> it was probably late. <laughs> they were getting on a bit then. Yeah, so there's a lot of flipping around in time in this one. I think he's a great director, Guy Ritchie, mm. personally. I know what he done. Aladdin for Disney and... But, yeah, I wouldn't go that far, but uh, Sherlock <laughs> Holmes. I do like the Sherlock Holmes films. I'm hoping there's a third Zoom. Uh, Revolver's yeah. a great one. Which one? Revolver. I, a lot of people don't like Revolver, but I love it. I always confuse Revolver with uh, Rock and Roller. Well, Rock and Roller's another great one, and not a lot of people like that one. Yeah. and oh, uh, Of course, he did Swept Away with Madonna as well. You ever seen yeah, that? Was, well, uh, yeah, I have one. I bought that by mistake in Woolworths, thinking I've got a Richie <laughs> film. It's mm. terrible. Exactly. It's, it's like his third big film. <laughs> it's not what people mm. expected. But it's a, first of all, it's a remake. I've got no time for grasses, or grouses, as my subtitle says. Feed them to the pigs, Errol. <laughs> Do you know who was um, supposed to play Bricktop? So Sean of Connery. Yeah, uh, no disrespect, but he couldn't have done it. Really? <laughs> Just for the being a hard case nutter, feeding people to pigs. Yeah. But yeah, apparently he was interested in doing it. He'd read the script and liked it. He'd done a went to a screening of Lockstock because he liked the director's thing, but he said he would do it, but they couldn't afford it. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh what is it? Alan Ford is just as good. But apparently, uh, the number one hated person in a sort of unofficial poll was uh, people who abused dogs, which was uh, <laughs> above people who uh, abused children. So uh, Guy Ritchie wanted to make him really unlikable, so he made a dog abuser, but <laughs> sort of yeah. backfired and made him more popular. Uh, which who was the main one in Lockstock? Oh, yeah, Nick Moran. He mm. did seem like he was going to be going on to things because Jason Fleming did a few Hollywood films and he returned up 
League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, but unfortunately that didn't go on. Uh, and Dexter yeah. Fletcher went on to be a director, and he did was it Rocket Man and Bohemian Rhapsody. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think Mick pretty... Moran got a bit too too full of himself. He tried to command ah. a, a, quite a lot of money, and I remember seeing him stage performances in local theaters, like for two hundred people. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's the trouble. It was the same with that. Yeah, when we did the hidden Michael Nori in that. Because he had a hit with Flashdance, he was a bit above himself and didn't do him any favours in the community. Mm. And ended up doing the softcore stuff <laughs> in the 90s, softcore thrillers. Oh, yes, Stephen Graham, he's in uh, The Irishman, isn't he, doing a Jersey accent? Yeah, that was... Yeah. He had to go up against, what is it, Pacino? Or was it De Niro in that one? In that scene? But, yeah, he was uh, holding his own against... Whoever it was, quite tense. Yeah, Bulldog yeah. Empire is in as well. Ah, uh, yes. I keep forgetting about that. Is it Nucky? <laughs> um, but yeah, Avi here, played by Darren Farana Farina, who was a mm. policeman in real life until he started acting. Forget he was in Ghost of the Mars, but then it's like, I, <laughs> I've, uh, it's a film I'd like to and tend to forget about anyway. <laughs> yeah. If only it had Kurt Russell escaping from Mars like it was supposed to. London. Yeah, London. You know, fish, chips, cup of tea, bad food, worse weather, Mary fucking Poppins, London. <laughs> he briefly reveals his Liverpool accent in the film. <laughs> to be fun, <laughs> Ghost of Mars is shite. How can an Ice Cube film be shite? And it's got Natasha Henstridge in. Yeah. <laughs> I tried to be oh, re watching yeah. that and I've turned it off. <laughs> His worst film, John Carpenter, quite easily. Yeah, no, no. Unfortunately, that was his, what was it? That was the last one he did of last millennium. I think he only did The Ward after that. Yeah, the wolves. It's all right. Yes, with so many great and hilarious characters in Snatch. Anybody have a fave character? Mine was Bricktop. He's definitely up there, but but there are so many. Because uh, Mickey the Pikey, or yeah. Bullet Tooth Tony. But yeah, whenever I think of this film, I think of Bricktop. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I do like love Bricktop, but I think I'm going to go with uh, Brad Pitt's Mickey. <laughs> yeah, it's just he disappears into that role, and like you wouldn't know. Yeah, because uh, was it after Lockstock, Brad Pitt wanted to make a film with Guy Ritchie, but Guy Ritchie said, "I got uh, there's nothing in the upcoming film, really." But then he auditioned him, but he found out he couldn't do a an English accent, <laughs> so. Uh, one of the main characters was out, but so he made the character of Mickey. <laughs> yeah, he changed, uh, wrote him in the script. And I was thinking, yeah. it wouldn't work without him. I, I, yeah, I don't see how it would, him. even if he was a lesser part. He's the whole yeah. back undercurrent of the story. I think I think Brad Pitt done an Irish accent. I've only seen it once on TV. Um, the Devil's Own with Ford. Harrison Ford. Yeah. yeah, that's right. So, <laughs> oh, Viva Las Vegas. But yeah, I've never seen that because it never looked any good. But obviously, you've only seen it once, so I guess not. Watched it on TV. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think it's all right. But yeah, it's a definite different kind of accent. Because oh, <laughs> apparently uh, Americans complained that they needed subtitles for Lockstock and they couldn't understand what the people were saying. So uh, Guy Ritchie wrote a character that even the cast of characters in his new film couldn't understand what he was saying. Things will get messy. <laughs> I think... 
out of everyone I know, I was one of the only to understand him. And it's only because I have lived where, not in the same road, but there was, uh, they find Pike is really offensive and you wouldn't say it to him, but travellers just to be uh, politically <laughs> correct. And that's exactly how they spoke. And yeah, it's quite, quite used to it when this come out. <laughs> But yeah, well, we get them in Western. There's about, oh, there's Bad Pitt's introduction. He's taking a ship behind a car. But um, <laughs> there's about 10 places in Western Supermare. They visit one. They Well, they break in because the council have put up uh, barriers and everything, but they break in. Yeah. They spend two days there. They get moved on to the next one. And then they just bounce around Western until they leave and go somewhere else. But leaving chaos behind them just as they're doing this. How big is your hair? Kids, how big is your hair? How big for sure? <laughs> That's my impression. <laughs> That's ring. <laughs> oh, there'll be no murdering around here. Well, she's about to find out they're wrong. <laughs> and I think she even says, over my dead body later on. So mm -hmm. it's all predicted. Just can't see Sean fitting in. Uh, Sean, I would have loved to have seen an audition at least. <laughs> Him doing Brick Top's lines. Especially the Nemesis one. Yeah, Rev I think Revolver and Rock and Roller both got terrible reviews, but they've got quite high ratings these days. Yeah, I think Rock and Roller is a brilliant film. Like Tom Wilkinson, he's incredible in that. Uh, well, yeah, I'm not, yeah, I, I remember not liking time. him the first time. So, and then watching it again and enjoying it because that's an early role by who's that Scotsman Gerald Butler Gerald yeah yeah I've that's always a, been a fan of him yeah he's been pretty good because what's he been in um, Phantom of the Opera Dracula 2001 mm. a lot of other stuff but oh yeah did you ever watch the Snatch TV series uh, I've tried, but I, I have a bit of an issue when it almost becomes like a parody when it's like line for line. People can't deliver it the same. It's just, I can't, can't get on with that. Yeah, I think I watched the first episode. Same with Lockstock, the TV show. That I think the, the Gentleman is out now, TV show, isn't there? I haven't watched that, but some people say that's good, so it could mm -hmm. be a change at least. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Guy Ritchie also did The Man from Uncle, which I do enjoy. The remake. Yeah. Anyway. King Arthur, I didn't mind. Well, apart from one part of David Beckham, that, that was yeah. too much. I know they're mates, but. Uh, so yeah, then he did The Gentleman. Oh, then he did Aladdin. <laughs> then he did The Gen Oh, he did The Gentleman the same year. That was a, a good one, too, with. Um... <laughs> Did you do uh, Wrath of Man? Yeah, then that was Wrath of Man was yeah. next. Just say That's a good one. Yeah, that was a good twist. Um, then Operation Fortune came out last year. Yeah, I haven't watched that one. That was that's okay again. It's another CGI heavy action film, but then he did The Covenant as well. That's a good film. That was a good film. It's not what I was expecting, where he was, because it was only half the film is what the whole film I thought was going to be. But yeah, I wasn't expecting the going yeah. back and getting. But yeah, nice. To, sadly, based on true stories. Yeah. <laughs> Get back down, or you're not coming up next time. But yeah, can't see Sean fitting in. Wasn't really, yeah, that's done that. Connery is great in just about anything, but yeah, it would be weird if he was in this. <laughs> but yeah. Oh, here we go. One shot and he's down. Was it um Golden Brown? Yeah, this is quite a tense scene because you don't know what they're going to do, so, both of them. Well, he looks like he's going to cry. <laughs> I'd be bloody crying if this in this situation where, yeah, two people arguing of what they're going to do to him. 
Alan Ford was in The Long Good Friday. I recently visited, and he was quite young in the movie, but he's easily spotted in a small role. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, he was, I guess he was a character actor who turned up in certain parts, and he could. Pierce Brosnan's in that as well as a small part. But yeah, I'll be yeah. watching that this Friday. I was supposed to do it last year, but I forgot. Oh, it was against Pacino. Yeah, one of my favorite scenes. Movie. Yeah, it was quite tense. He looks. Because <laughs> in this one, he's <laughs> he's almost crying. Bless him. <laughs> uh, remember Dexter Fletcher from Press Gang? Exactly. Those were the, who was the the girl in Press Gang? They all fancied. Oh, well, I haven't right. seen that. <laughs> Maybe before your time. <laughs> Children's ITV show. Oh, yeah. Dexter Fletcher. Um, I was watching an old episode of Games Master the other day, weirdly, and I'm sure he used to host it or something. I think I think he did host it at some point, didn't he? Like the, when it came back at some point, didn't he? Yeah. Uh, so there's Goldie playing Bad Boy. It's amazing. It? Don't, a what? don't see what uh, happens to him, though, do you? Which one, Goldie? Yeah, he's, he's still in the body bag on the floor, and you don't see if they yeah. let him go. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Everyone dies off screen in this, don't they, pretty much? I didn't, didn't know what happens to them. But yeah, Goldie was turning up in this. What was he in? The World Is Not Enough. I think he was a... Was he a rapper? Yeah, like English English rap. <laughs> Can't call it music. Oh, that's all right. We're calling them jippos now, so that's all right. The Moody Gold. But uh, yeah, these two made a joke in um, the making of that. They're the only <laughs> two black guys to survive a, f a film. <laughs> when you think about it, though, it's like. A lot of people miss miss the point back when this come out. These two are the couple of biggest gullible idiots going because they're actually getting nothing from the job they're taking on. They're risking everything. No. Nothing up front. Yeah, nothing up front. They get the cash. He just wants the, the briefcase. But yeah, they end up no cash and getting arrested at the end because they've got a dead body in the car. So it's not going to end well for them. Triple X two the next level may be worse than. <laughs> I did it. I did like Triple X three when uh, Ice Cube turned up to save the day, though. <laughs> Mike's here. Good evening, Mike. I'm Mike. Uh, Vinnie Jones. Oh, he's in the Gentleman TV show. Looking old now. Well, yes. What was it? He was in um, Swordfish with John Travolta, and Gone in sixty seconds with Nicolas Cage. I think wasn't it? And it was swordfish, one of the most Paul's moments. <laughs> <laughs> you mean this the spiraling action scene, just so you can see how it was no. done. <laughs> yeah. That was a good test of your surround sound, but yeah. If you wanna is there a 4K of that yet? But yeah, see. Yeah. <laughs> But apparently this dog did bite Lenny <laughs> and a few people. The, well, the first dog they used, it was a mental dog and it did bite people for real. But Lenny in the crotch once. So they had to get rid of it and get another dog in. <laughs> oh, is there too many mics in the chat again? Oh, you got Mike. You got, oh, Mike's <laughs> Blu-ray, Mike Beetle. Uh, this is not enough. Too many scousers. Put a leash on our turkeys before she gets bitten. <laughs> now you don't want to get bitten, do you, sweetheart? <laughs> I shot him. Yes, it's, it's, it's a, a reading of the script of this film. There's so many quotes. Uh, do you remember the TV crime series in the 90s, Crime Story, produced by Michael Mann? Went on for a few seasons, and Dennis Farina was its leading star. It was a series that was available to rent. Yes, I do remember. Uh, crime Story it was it's usually on late night TV, but yeah, they did release double episodes on rentals back in the day. So you could have Crime Story 6 or something and it would just be two stories slapped together. But yeah, that was a good one. So, because tomorrow night we're discussing Miami Vice. Oh, I love that show. <laughs> it's, it, 
I've been I'm up to season one, but I'm not gonna make it <laughs> all the way through, but it is cracking TV. Should have done an Americanized version like they did with Mad Max. Well that apparently there is an alternate dubbing to this film. Where does it say that? It does say somewhere. Get the proper information because it's on the internet, so it must be trustworthy. Um in the American version, Turkish seems to announce it far more clearly in several of his voiceovers, especially near the beginning. In the British version, his speech is close to that of the character and dialogue. So, there you go. Uh, so the six deleted scenes on the DVD. And <laughs> in the German dub version, the line "The Germans has been translated to Bozman, meaning angry man. Or Bozeman. Bozeman. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, the dog's attacking the chair and the back of Lenny's jacket. It wasn't supposed to, though. It just improvised. Yeah, he was excellent in this. And uh, was he in, he's in Manhunter with Michael Mann? He was in Crime Story. He had a part in, I think he's in one episode of Miami Vice and Get Shorty. Midnight Run? Yes, Midnight Run. He's the gangster in that. That's it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there you go. Crime Story, when they remember them, when they were released on VHS, trying to make them look like films. Yes. Oh, there you go. Squeaky Toy's gone. It was an unrated series, in my opinion. Yeah, I need to rewatch that. I only caught random episodes. I'm guessing it's. I don't know if it's got a Blu ray. There he is. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm coughing on me. You gonna watch this with us? No. No. Okay. <laughs> All right. Good night. <laughs> All right. Um. All right. Ah. Dennis, now get the. Yeah. Daddy, what? I didn't have a drink. All right. I'll get you a drink in a minute. <laughs> ah, get him some whiskey. Get the fuck out of here to catch a fish. Um, yes, I forgot. This is where I got my men. No, I invented the Nemesis thing way before this film. The This might be a better list to have a non -nem Nemesis list. I, it's Tom Hardy. Oh, I forgot Tom Hardy's in there. Yeah. Um, handsome Bob. I think he plays in that. <laughs> Mad Fist went mad. And the gun shot himself. <laughs> ah, but yes, I, have to, I need to watch that gun and the other one. All right. Uh, Rusty's here. Good evening, Russ. Now ah, that's it. Julia Swalahala. That's her. She was in that press gang. He did series three. I'm way behind now. Sol and Vincent are my favorite characters in Snatch. <laughs> yeah, the bit where they rob the bookies is uh, based off real footage of real idiot criminals trying to rob bookies and all the situations they got into. Mm. Ah, there you go. Uh, Dexter Fletcher was in The Bounty with Anthony Hopkins. That was early 80s with uh, Mel Gibson. Uh... Oh, he's oh yeah! I saw him on the cover of uh, his Pacino son in <laughs> Revolution in 1985. <laughs> oh, gangsters! He definitely did better movies later on, that's for sure. Hey, La Aladdin made a billion. Can't be bad. God, oh, Aladdin is crap. <laughs> I never saw it. Oh, so. uh, when. Went around my family's for Christmas. I had that on. I felt like leaving. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the Anna cartoon one with um, Robin Williams in is great. Yeah. But no. Well, it's the same. I had to sit through Beauty and the Beast all two and a half hours of it in the cinema. The oh. uh, remake. Great quote coming up now. Yeah. Look me now, don't you, little fucker? <laughs> uh, hey, Alice is here. What's the better soundtrack? Ooh, this or Lockstock? 
love the Oasis song at the end of this movie, Fucking in the Bushes. <laughs> I don't know, that's a soundtrack. I'm going to say, yeah, this one. A bit more varied. But yeah, there's some cracking songs on both. You better your bollocks, your barn dance, you're not. Oh, fuck me. Your lady friend got a voice. <laughs> oh, there's a triple X3, yes, unfortunately. Uh, that was four or five years ago now, isn't it? When uh, Vin Diesel returned triumphantly <laughs> to the Triple X franchise. <laughs> I saw that in the cinema. That was <laughs> disappointing until Ice Cube turned up. Hey, Bob. Uh, good evening, oh, Snatch. I must have... The wrong stream. I'm here for the Snatch. <laughs> False advertising. Yes, they did. What was it? They were going to add if Americans wanted to change the title to, I think it was Snatched or Snatcher. So, uh, not to <laughs> make it uh, problematic. But, yeah. So, yeah. Taglines is Stealing Stones and Breaking Bones. So, so, yeah. But anyone looking for... Lovely Lady Snatch is going to be very disappointed tonight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Jeff prefers this soundtrack, but Lockstock has a great one as well. Yeah, it's a tricky one to, <laughs> to choose. I need to listen to them separately. The Jewish press paper. <laughs> How awkward is this when the models have the jewelry on and then people just Pull them close and look at the jewelry on them. She's got to keep a straight face and a smile. <laughs> ah, the you run podcast is here, which I'm part of the network. So there you go. Hello, thanks for joining us, Scott. Uh, Patrick's here. Have teacher with you. Miami Vice was fun until it turned into the Crockett Show. There is a switch. Uh, probably about season four. <laughs> Especially the ending of season four. But they had to go some, otherwise they were just repeating themselves, I guess. But we'll find out tomorrow. Uh yes, they Americanized train spotting as well, didn't they? Because they couldn't understand them and even the subtitles didn't help them. <laughs> I don't know if we should come uh, find that offensive. <laughs> I, I can't even understand that film. Uh... <laughs> I, I tried reading the book once. <laughs> it's written in the the same language phonetically. It's oh. a fucking nightmare to read. Well, my doesn't my help. Uh, Ewan McG McGregor's probably uh, my least favorite actor ever. Oh, can't stand him. I think, apart from Star Wars, um, what else has he done? I suppose the only one I would re-watch is The Island with Scarlett Johansson. I think that's a lot of fun. Yeah, that's but... a Michael Bay one, isn't it? I'm trying to think because what did he do? After Train Spotting, he did a Cameron Diaz film uh, that died of death where he kidnaps her but then she tags along. But mm -hmm. yeah, oh, apart from Knocking Bones with uh, Elizabeth Winstead, What's he done with his life? But unfortunately, I don't yeah. have a pastel colored suit or designer Ravens, but I may have some mock ups <laughs> for tomorrow night. Mm. Jeff is watching it as well at the moment. The music, yeah, the guest stars is going gonna to be an hour of me just reading out the, those famous people that went on to be famous actors that starred in it. It's a massive, every episode has about two or three people that went on to be big names. Julia Roberts appeared in an episode earlier today, when I watched today mm. before she was famous. Yeah, the whole vibe and looks of the show, yeah. Had an amazing soundtrack as well. Oh, yeah, Crime Story only has a DVD release. Oh, damn, that's a shame. It'll probably look cool. Oh, here we go. This is where the, <laughs> the heist breaks down. Finds a bit ahead of it. 
Uh, yeah, Don Johnson was the man back in the day. Unfortunately, things didn't work out as such. He the was off spot. a lot of roles. <laughs> he did this do one. very well in hot spot, yes. <laughs> but then was it? Um, oh, yeah, so when uh, Lenny gets the shotgun to the nards just then, that was real. It wasn't <laughs> supposed to happen. So he wasn't expecting such recoil. I do a lot better if you stop using my name. <laughs> All bets are off. <laughs> uh, yeah, Thief and Heat are fave Michael Mann films. One day we'll get the keep. Hey, Tommy Gunn, Manhunter and Heat for me. Uh, got there as Violent Streets on Warner Brothers Big Box. One of my favorite tapes. Ah, I see, yeah. Manhunter's great. I do like Manhunter. I think Jeff likes heat. Yeah, just a bit. <laughs> Robert McCall was the man back in the day. Yes, he was cleaning up New York while Crockett was <laughs> cleaning up Miami. Oh. <laughs> Trying to get out the door, of course, it opens inwards. <laughs> it won't open because it's a security door. And all they've got is a bag of coppers. And, a... <laughs> and the bullets shooting the door bounce off, break the bag of coppers and shoot him in the leg. <laughs> uh, I do like Lock Stop, but there's something knowingly cool about it. Well, originally this this was going to be a, a straight film. There wasn't going to be any comedy in it, but then it just worked out that I think <laughs> you got a lot of comedy from this one. But yeah, the uh, you know I guess Lockstock is twenty six years old now, isn't it? But yeah. yeah. What's that professor up to? Get in touch with Michael Mann and get him to release the HD release of the Keep. <laughs> I'm on it, Professor. Uh, I th don't know what the license uh, is. Is it music licensing the issue with that one? Because that's the last thing I heard. Plus, people have seen it and didn't like it. So it would have to be a completely re-edit as well. Uh, Luke's here from Films Unboxings. Can't beat Snatch. Good film, indeed. So... Apparently, if you watch Mickey's tattoos, they fade <laughs> throughout the matches he does. The more Brad I've Pitt's never, I've never noticed that. I've never <laughs> noticed. People have. I do like Mickey smoking a fag, just sitting in his hat before the match starts. <laughs> I know he looks like a fat fucker. Well, he is a fat fucker, but he's a cheating bastard. Bomber, the madman, Harris. <laughs> so yeah, the cigarette is in and out of his mouth. So in the long shot, it was in his mouth. The close up, it disappeared. And then he takes it out of his mouth. <laughs> Apparently, this is based off a. I think this one's the based off of a real fight where the first thing is a headbutt, and then the second thing is a punch that's not a knockout straight away. Uh oh. <laughs> But after doing Fight Club, Brad Pitt wasn't interested in doing another fighting film. So he, he almost didn't do this because it's a, a boxing film. Uh... <laughs> Everyone in the chat seems to love themselves some Snatch. I'm guessing they mean the film. Oh, I don't know if Mike, uh, Jeff does. Wow. Do you, do you know what this means when he says, I'll cut your Jacobs off? <laughs> <laughs> Crackers. Yeah. So, knackers. To, uh, knackers to uh, yeah. balls. But yeah, imagine Connery saying that. <laughs> it wouldn't quite work. <laughs> I need to get Jeff to do a dub for me. <laughs> yeah. 
looking for some lovely lady snatch on this. Oh, yes. Sorry. Sorry. Yes. Family friendly channel. No mention of pikeys or snatches. I feel like my man hunter. Yeah. There you go. Uh, Dr. Sleep. He was Oscar worthy good. Oh, yes. That's um, you and McGregor. You? Oh, that, do you know that's what completely put me off of him? The Shining is one of my all time favorite films. I absolutely hated Dr. Sleep. <laughs> uh, it, it took away everything that's special about The Shining. It, it just. No, I've, I've tried to erase my memory of that film. I hate it with a passion. Hang on, hang on. <laughs> a, life Seth, a Life Less Ordinary. That was the one with Catherine. Uh, what's her face? Yeah, I've heard of that film. Yeah, it's not good. But it was the reteaming of them. Because, yeah, he he lost out on the beach because they wanted they went with the big star of uh, whoever's in the beach. Caprio. Yes. <laughs> and then here's Boris the Blade. I love how he puts it ear, ear things in, ear protectors in before he shoots. Del Toro. Uh didn't mind him in Doctor Sleep. See, he was pretty good there, see. <laughs> I can't watch that because well, I can't watch it because the baseball kids scene is quite hard. Don't trust. No, don't anyone be forgetting about Manhunter masterpiece. Yes. Now, when I did the um, there it is, the uh, video store the other night, I had uh, was it Warner? Not Warner's. CBS Fox. Now the VSX rental of Manhunter was a um on that and CBS Fox release, but then I was going to check my retail release and it's Universal. So I guess this is after they changed hands. So this is from two thousand. So I, there was a reason it wasn't in the pack. Uh, what's she done with his life? Says the man who spent 90 minutes watching the hidden. <laughs> Hidden's a masterpiece. Uh, oh, sorry, yes, meant Robert McCall, of course, yes. Respect to Robert McCall. Yes, even, Gre uh, even McGregor, Ewan McGregor, sorry. He's shagging the ever lovely Ramona Flowers, the bastard. <laughs> Let's see if he's done one thing right. So they've got you, Ewan Bremner's in this one, isn't he, from Train Spotting? Oh, yeah, he's uh, his name there. Mullet. He called? Mullet, that's it. <laughs> and his breast stinks. Not a massive Ewan McGregor, but enjoyed Train Spotting, and that's because it's Train Spotting. But yeah, I guess was it Shallow Grave he did before Train Spotting? Yeah. But yeah, after he did the where was it Night Watch? He did after Train Spotting, I think. Is that the one with Nick Nick Nolte in that one? I think that's it. Yeah, it's a remake, isn't it, yeah. of a European film, I believe. Hmm. Yeah, this Boris the Blade actor was in everything around this time, wasn't he? Not that I can think of another film he's in, apart from that. Yeah, I had it; it's gone. It wasn't in a Bond film. I'm sure. He was in a remake of South Pacific, I think. I'm sure I've seen something like that on TV. You know, <laughs> I just thought oh, it's this guy. Yeah, I can never. Typically, I can't think of a damn thing. He's oh the the saint. With uh, Val Kilmer. Okay. <laughs> um, where is he? But there's something else. Typically, there's no rhyme nor reason to this bloody list of actors. There you go. His name is Raid Sabedzia. So, uh, he's still with us. Known for the saint. Batman Begins, he's the homeless man that gets the jacket. I said, oh, yeah. Mission Impossible 2, he's the doctor at the beginning. Oh, he's still making films. Air Force Down, uh, Air Force One Down. 
I've seen Lost End that I've seen. Uh, but yeah. Slowing down a bit now. Let's see, going back. He's made a lot of films. Obviously a lot of European films and TV shows. Until he did. Yeah, it looks like it came in. Started doing English, then The Saint. Mighty Joe Young, Eyes Wide Shut, Stigmata, Mission Impossible 2, Space Cowboys, Snatch, South Pacific, as you said, mm. The Quiet American, Euro Trip, <laughs> Batman Begins, The Fog Remake, Shooter, some episodes of 24. Oh, uh, yeah, got around. Uh, oh, Bob got lucky day. He bought some VHS from a charity shop. One of the takes of Superman 3 taken from ITV. It's the extended TV version with the original opening credits in space. Bloody hell. <laughs> Digitize that, Bob, straight away. Protect it. I'm watching Heat right now. As a matter of fact, the 4K is on. It's in the background, anyway. It makes a nice picture. Uh, that's a great find. Yeah, that is amazing to find. It might be a very rare thing that you've got there. Oh, Michael Myers has still got the old ITV version of Death Wish 2 with all the Nazi bits cut. But th there are a load of extra scenes that aren't violent. I'm guessing. That's a hard watch, that film. Mm. Yes, I don't know what it was with. <laughs> Michael Winner and rape, uh, rape films. I was going to say grape soda, but I completely have been time. Uh, speaking of Don Johnson, I quite like the Nash Bridges TV series that he also did with the excellent cop buddy series with Cheech Marin. I see, I I was, uh, didn't, I think I saw it when it first started, but then I lost it out on it. But then I did watch the comeback special or whatever it was a couple of years ago. <laughs> oh. I wasn't calling your mum a tart. I just meant <laughs> save your breath for cooling your porridge. And then, yeah, it, whatever he's talking about now, the, the, the subtitles. The part I, I could, not this particular part, but I could understand most of this until the subtitles went. <laughs> but I was just trying to explain the periwinkle <laughs> blue and save your breath for cooling your porridge. <laughs> Apparently, the periwinkle blue is a reference to the dress, colour dress. Norman Bates's mum wears is mentioned in Psycho. Ah. Right now, I tell you what, <laughs> fucker. <laughs> That's an ad lib. <laughs> that dog jumped up at him. It's a great film, yeah. Don't say how old a movie is. Makes me feel well old. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Professor. Yeah, I remember Nash Bridges being on telly a lot, but I never, I never watched it because around that time I'm busy doing something. Yeah, but it was, from what I remember, pretty good. Yeah, it was, although he'll always be Sonny Crockett, won't he? That's it. He was also great in Mickey Rourke and Harley Davidson, the Marlboro Man. That's a I hated that film when it first came. Well, I didn't like hate. I just didn't like it. But then rewatching it a few years ago, I realized how good it is. But then um, apparently those two didn't get on in real life, which is, might be a shock. But despite the great chemistry they had, so this is a good scene where they intercut the the hair coursing and the chasing the fat mm. guy. <laughs> uh, that's great. We better have something special. Gets. I've only got. What have I got? Empire Strikes Back recorded from TV. I think that was early nineties. VHS original vintage bootlegs and TV recordings of films will only get more collectible. Very much part of the culture and history. Well, yes, that's what happened to Burt Reynolds' film Stick. Someone had recorded the TV edit. They found it uh, about 30 years later and realized it's a completely different film. So it's on the Blu-ray now. They have to HD it up a little bit. Uh, 
I think the name doesn't help it. Harley Davidson, the Marlboro Man. No. Doesn't roll off the tongue. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Learned a bit of Cockney from Mel Smith in European Vacation. <laughs> when he runs the hotel. Um, sorry to shout, but I will do anything, even that, for an old TV podcast of The Lost Boys. Please help me. Of all the uh, of all the videos I've ever had through my hands, yeah, I've had nothing, nothing like that. It's going to be one of the uh, picking a film to find is going to be really tricky. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Jeff will work on an edit. <laughs> uh, a copy would be fine. Just hit me up if you can help. Yes, if anyone's got <laughs> uh, Lost Boys, I'm guessing from ITV because a BBC copy won't be much use. They collectible then to TV recordings of VHS. People actually like them. Well, yeah, that's because they're a different edit usually. They're, uh, okay. That's pretty much the only difference. It's like a oh, uh, Scarface and stuff like all the swearing taken out and dubbed on. Where'd you get that scar from eating pineapple? Oh. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Die, Die Hard 2 with the. Uh, uh, yippee ki -yay, Mr. Falcon. <laughs> Underneath the weapon, no, missing won't. the last fight. There you go. Very underrated flick. And I think Tommy Gunn, yeah, what are you willing to do, Tommy? <laughs> You'd be Michael Myers' bitch for a week. Uh, don't mind the first zombie Halloween, the second, though. Uh, what a pile of garbage. Well, that's the trouble with mm -hmm. Zombies Halloween. The second one is a starts off quite well, but then it just pisses it away because it's a dream. So the first 20, 30 minutes are irrelevant. Is it is the se second one the one where he um, absolutely smashes to pieces the woman who was the girl from number four in the bathroom? Yeah. Is that the second one? Yes, yeah, yeah. so I remember sort of tuning out of, of that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the first one was, was pretty decent. It was different, at least. But yeah, the second one just has that bloody song playing all the way through it. And then, even though she died in the first film, Sherry, Lee's, Z Sherry Zombie turning up as a bloody ghost with a white horse. Yeah. Oh, no joke. <laughs> Anything. <laughs> Switch off Zombie Halloween about half an hour. Just couldn't watch anymore. Yes, well, once you've been threatened with skull fucking, where is there to go? It is very white trash. You've got to get rid of them because it's no good leaving it in the deep freeze for your mum to discover now, is it? <laughs> Have you seen Cockneys versus Zombies? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah <it's, laughs> I only watched it because of, uh, he's in it, Alan Ford. Hmm. But... <laughs> yeah, he's pretty good in that. Because I know um, yeah, he f a lot of the slides you had to memorize. You. There's a few bloopers in messing it up because it is complicated things to do. Uh, yes, Pope of Greenwich Village, Firefly, Angel Heart, and Spun. Yeah, because Mickey Rock had his wrestler come back, didn't he? But then what did he do? Iron Man 2, didn't he? And then <laughs> he's done some good stuff, though. Year of the Dragon, people forget about That's, that's a yeah. brilliant film. That's, yeah, that's uh, about 40 years old now, isn't it? Johnny Hanson was a good one. Johnny Hanson, Angel Heart, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, nine and a half weeks and Wild Orchid. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, he's going to keep an eye. There's another big box Manhunter from a re release sometime. It's red and black artwork and doesn't look as good. Not sure about the cut of the film, though. Yeah, you know, I should just check out all my cuts, thing. <laughs> I might struggle with it. Yeah, it's going to be a struggle to find Lost Boys. But who knows? Oh, here we go. Do you know what Nemesis means? Righteous infliction of retribution manifested by an appropriate agent. Personified in this case by an audible cunt. <laughs> <laughs> Me. Uh, if someone lost their minds and decided to make a sequel or remake of one of Guy Ritchie's film, but make it good, 
which movie would you want to see get a me remake or sequel? Oh, it's, it's got to be Rock and Roller. I would have thought it had it would have had a sequel the way it's uh, ended. Um, do you remember the end of it? I can't remember it now. So Mark Strong goes to pick up. I forget his name now. He he was in Dead Man's Shoes, the Ben Hur remake. Yeah, Toby something. Yeah, like totally he goes awesome. to pick him up, and they they give like this monologue speech and says, "Next time you'll see the real rock and roller." <laughs> uh, and I thought, oh, yeah, I've like, always wanted a sequel. I oh shit, there's tits. Oh, have we missed them? <laughs> I probably displayed them. Yeah, there they are. <laughs> so yeah, he gets shot six times. One of them goes through his cheek and hits his, takes his teeth out. So then he gets the survives, gets the bullets taken out and put in his te with missing teeth <laughs> in one sitting. <laughs> Hopefully, no gentleman got offended by seeing any tits in the small picture there. Well, I still want the uh, third <laughs> Sherlock Holmes film. Oh yeah, or or, or um, Man from Uncle. I did enjoy that one. That was a good retro film. I thought that was really good. I know one of the guys is problematic now, but <laughs> oh yeah, he won't get out. He won't be in it. Uh, love Barfly and Angel Heart, but would have Harley Davidson. Over the two of them for me. So it's just so damn entertaining. But my favorite would probably be Year of the Dragon. Yeah, that's its favorite performances. Good old canon films. Yeah. So, and yeah, if anyone's got the Cobra work print, you could make a lot of money out there. Another great film. Hmm. Oh, people are getting chopped up. Yeah. Definitely agree with that. I got a Beautiful green, green stock TV recording of Top Gun found as is on a green tape stock, one of a kind, palescent. Gave it to a mate, but can make a copy for trades. There you go. Uh, uh, I was, I was a fan. Oh, I was a fan of <laughs> Yeah, the Dragon. My favorite. There you go. It's a cracking film. I know it's probably slow compared to most things now, but yeah. I think I first saw it on TV. The wrestler, yeah. You know. But you know, everyone loves you, the dragon. Death Wish 2 is rough. The disc I have, I think, the uncut Dutch one, which doesn't hold back. Mm. Ah. We've got the Australian umbrella one. <laughs> Another one of those films that's many copies of in different countries. I don't know why it's called mullet. I was thinking that, yeah. <laughs> He makes yeah, me feel good. dirty, though. He is, he is horrible. He is, isn't he? He's greasy, dirty, just like he's never washed those clothes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, takes him for a ride. Comfortable mullet? Is there a collector's group? <laughs> there probably is on Facebook, but yeah, you could start one. Yeah, the dragon is awesome and underage. I know that Runaway Train was Canon's most uh, critically applauded film, but who was the director of Year of the Dragon? Was it Michael Cimino? Yeah, sure yeah. it was. Uh, I hear you. The Dutch and German releases are uncut, as well as the Australian release by Umbrella. I might add, there you go. <laughs> you believe in Jesus? No dice. <laughs> Who the thought these punks believed in Jesus? Ah, yeah, there you go. So, yeah, I've got the big box X rental of The Other Dragon. It's pretty cool. Apparently, Vinnie Jones and uh, Dennis Farina got on very well making this, and 
<laughs> because they're both uh, non-actors and didn't train or anything. And then uh, Vinny Jones took him out to the um, dog tracks one night, <laughs> oh. which he didn't enjoy. <laughs> I love the dog tracks. <laughs> You can't beat. You go there. Our local one. They were sitting now. Twelve ninety five. You get a free bet, a pint, and a burger and chips in a basket. It's That's great. <laughs> yeah. That's, can't even get a cinema ticket for that now. Nice. Let me wrong. The burgers like cardboard, but it's uh... oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the thought that counts. Cheese is ten pound extra. Oh, is it? Nash yeah. Bridges has the hot brunette from El Razor Three. Funny that Michael Myers remembers that bit. Yeah, the Dragon Wrestler. Yeah, Mickey Rourke will mainly be famous for nine and a half weeks. Yes, uh, that, he might be his biggest. Sent out most fire, wasn't he? Was he? Or Diana? He's in one of them. In which one? Diner or St. Elmo's yeah, Fire. Yeah, I think sure. Diner, wasn't it? I think Diner. that's a, one of his early roles. I remember watching them back to back. That's a trouble. You've watched these things back to back. They all merge. Oh. Smashing up the arcade. <laughs> Made him an instant star, yes. And then he did the Wild Orchid sequel. Uh, uh, similar film. Is there a guy saying, and is that, uh, it has the guy, and now Superman 3, even the ad breaks are paused. Okay. <laughs> uh, Gordon, I caught the other night, was saw before, was 1988, uh, 1998, Black Dog with Swayze. I've never seen that. I know Meatloaf's in that. But I don't think I've ever seen it. I think it was like a straight-to-video one back in those days. Oh, and uh, Cooking... Is Ma. So, uh, oh, I remember this. So, yeah. When you see the fire, the van burning, and Mickey being held back, when you see it from behind, that's not Brad Pitt. That's his stand in. Not that you yeah. can tell, because it's all just silhouettes. Uh, I wasn't too big on that one, but did like Ken Basin on it. I don't know. Do you see more of the woman in um, Wild Awkward than you do with Kim Basinger in Nine and a Half Weeks? I haven't seen that one, Mike. Is that any good? Probably worth a watch, isn't it? The wrestler movie was really like Homeboy. That rock starred in one for wrestling, one for boxing. Of course, yeah, he was good. He, I remember the 90s when he became a professional boxer. And got his face mashed in. He should have won an Oscar for the wrestler, but biased Hollywood. Should have easily yeah, who, won an Oscar for that. Someone, who got that instead? Someone not Can't remember the year now. Yeah, I know it was one of those We Were Robbed ones. Oh, it was a trucker movie, throwback to the 70s. Pretty good, there you go. Okay. Cool. Uh, love Mickey Rourke. As a meth cook in Spun, Rob Halford has a cameo owning an adult store in all his leather looking glory. A young Mickey Rock was in The Fan. That's come up a few times. I keep remember to forget to watch that one. He, oh, he did do... I forgot he did the sequel. Another nine and a half weeks. Because, bloody hell. Thank you, uh, Ramon. Welcome. Prayer for the dying. Is he a priest in that or is he not a priest in that? I can't remember. I know it's like... is he playing an Irish fella in it? That's like an early 90s one, I think. Uh... Black Dog is fun. Some decent action scene. Okay, I'll check that out. So, yes, welcome, Ramon. Uh, Christopher Walken is in Homeboy. Not bad. Enjoying the movie. Oh, yes. <laughs> Everyone's having a great time in this. There's a strange man who wants to sell us an 84 carat stone. Yeah, just happens to turn up in the shop. He's got a thick Russian accent, and then suddenly he's looking straight at the camera. <laughs> uh, 
Jeffrey. Yeah, can't be bad. Yeah, has Christopher Walken done a bad film? Uh, I, mean, I watched a really good one. One of my favourites um, at close range. I watched the other night again. I it's still need to. I still need to watch that with the such the Pen Brothers. Mm, really good. Yeah, but yeah, I'm trying to think. What's he done? This people bring up as his worst. <laughs> Although I, I, I love him in Mouse Hunt, so. Yeah, he's great. Oh, Wedding crashes, he was great in that. Yeah. We have a signed Mickey Rock photo with him on a motorbike in Rumblefish. Ooh, that's nice. I haven't seen Rumblefish for a very long time. <laughs> I've shot him six times. <laughs> Offended over by tits, never. Oh, thank you, Jeff. That's awesome, yeah. My favourite Mickey Rocks are Barfly, Angel Heart, and the other Dragon. Yeah, they're all 80s ones, aren't they? Which is replicas. <laughs> Extra loud blanks, which will <laughs> come in handy later. Offended by tits. The day that happens, I quit online. <laughs> I hear you. More tit films, people say. Oh, sorry, Michael Myers. Oh, sorry, he's extremely unoffended by tits. <laughs> Bunch of sad losers here. Yeah. I'm offended. I shall take my channel down immediately. What the hell? I gathered there was originally a five-hour version, nine and a half weeks. I was felt it jumpy and like it bits were missing. Bloody a five hours though. <laughs> Can't imagine that. Yeah, so Nighthawks is another one I'd love to see uncut. That's true. If that and Cobra are missing at least half an hour of lost footage mm. until someone finds it. What do you make of this uh, digital de uh, deterioration, deter uh, deterioration? If I can speak. Where stuff stored in the clouds of like the studios is getting degraded and films are being lost that aren't available in a physical copy anymore. Uh, it's really, yeah, really sad. I was thinking about this a month, six weeks, six weeks ago. I bought that film Fight for Your Life video nasty. I'm thinking that's damaged now, so that's the only copy we'll we're going to get is just from that and yeah. there's so many films in there's so many films like um especially like the full cut like Cyan Borg uh, Dolph Lundgren's Punisher where you've got all the extra footage in there and it's just where it's just been rotting away it's you can't it's unwatchable really yeah it's, it's terrible yeah you know, I don't know what they can do whether they can remaster it onto 4k digitally save it preserve it it's yeah. a shame I know Fanzine's made a video of it uh, on his channels, bringing it up, saying uh, all these like straight to video films of the '90s, horror films of the '90s that there's no yeah. film reels of them because they were <laughs> straight to video films and stuff like that. So there's nothing to come back from. So unless people have got a copy of it, it's uh, gone forever. Yeah. Yeah. You know, loads of them films i was telling my other half the other day I used to rent a chart title from my local independent video store and they had these big binders in the center like horror action and was about 500 film sleeves in each one and you'd get you <laughs> flick through for ages and you get one of them for 50p for two nights and that's where <laughs> a lot of this what arrow and 88 are released i remember from back oh, yeah. in the 90s i had to get my nan to come and rent it with me <laughs> I'm guessing she didn't know what you were watching. No, as long as me and my cousins used to just watch back to back, and she come in, we was watching like Terminator, Halloween. Those was great days. <laughs> uh, da, 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 da. Where am I? 
yeah, five hours of weeks. Yeah, Jesus Christ. No one no one could put up with that. A prison film called Animal Factory with Willem Dafoe, Edward Furlong, and a small role as Mick Rock as a tranny jam the actress. Yeah. <laughs> Old Children of the Corn, TV version is another one I would love to see. Apparently, had loads of stuff, not in any other version. Yeah. I think the original Children of the Corn is like an hour and 20 minutes or something stupid because it's missing so much. They cut out. Mickey Rock with White Buffont in the Year of the Dragon. <laughs> Comedy. <laughs> He's got the hair for that one. That's anything with hair. Mickey Rock just wasn't old enough for grey hair yet. <laughs> same, did the same with Fright Night, didn't they, with um, Roddy McDowell. His hair is just like talcum powdered yeah. to his head in that one, and then in the sequel it's a bit more natural looking. And Tom Cruise in Collateral, that didn't suit him. <laughs> no, that's weird, isn't it? Doesn't just mm. doesn't sit right. Uh, oh yes, Mickey Rock was of course in Sin City. Yes, that's that was Marv. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I don't, it's Stephen Graham right in the nuts. <laughs> you certainly told him. Uh, that's true. It's just, uh, similar to the in Once Upon a Time in America. It looked a bit jarring. Oh. There you oh, go. Yeah. It's another aged... Just check some white stuff in this area. Right? No one will notice. On VHS. Tommy, one of his best. <laughs> like a demolition <laughs> rat burger. I guess that's at your, your dog, dog races. It's probably oh, eating yeah. the losers, aren't you? Oh. <laughs> yeah, literally, if you look at the burger, like it looks like he's got art trees in there and all sorts. It's terrible. <laughs> I hate that with cheap burgers. Uh, Mickey Rock is playing the older cop, a bit like Tom Cruise playing an older hitman in collateral with the grey hair. There you go. Great minds. So you imagine me as a at a dog trash asking for a soy latte. <laughs> I'm trying to I was trying to think when you said dog track, I don't even know where there's one near me. I don't know if there's any in Bristol. I think Swindon's got one. Yeah, we used to have two. One shut down. Nah. Miss the old ITV on screen presenters introducing everything, and the programs weren't shit. <laughs> Live from Norwich, it's the, it's the quiz of the week. A woman like Kim Bassinger. No, Kim Bassinger. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was in, uh, when, uh, in that Sarah Ferguson, isn't it? He's so offended. <laughs> okay, like, a respectable yeah. man. <laughs> oh, I, love, I, love, I love bottom. Oh, yeah, there you go. It's, it's Mickey Rock did the old knob in the popcorn gag in Diner. <laughs> That's another thing he'll be remembered for. Black Dog's a trucker film. I'm too sexy. Uh, yeah, I'm too damn sexy. I'm, I know, I'll become a boxer, mess up my face, then get plastic surgery, and that will <laughs> fix that problem. Yeah, that's because, uh, was it about five years ago, he made a film called Commando, where he was the bad guy in it, and it's got Michael J. White as the good guy commando coming to get him. But mm. he's just, his face is so... Odd. It just every time he was on the screen, it threw me off. Yeah, he's just ruined it. I think he done Domino and Expendables, and he looked rough in that as well. Both of those. Yeah, yeah. Domino. That's a good going back a bit on isn't it? Strange choice for um, that lady from Pirates of the Caribbean. I forget the name. <laughs> I guess they were trying to say, although that'd be a woke film now, wouldn't it? Because <laughs> she, although it is based on a true story of a sl mm. s slim young model that went went hard and uh, became a bounty hunter, so technically <laughs> it's correct. She did fight people. Uh, where are we? <laughs> a view to a kill was his worst. That was his. Yeah. See, me and Jeff disagree. <laughs> 
Well, that's that's, that's a good point. film, that. That's Grace Jones as well was in that. that yeah. They got the, uh, oh, what do they call them things? Big, big hot air balloon things. Yeah. Oh, like yeah, the, plane whatever the Americans call them. Yeah, I like that. Put your socks up, that RV. <laughs> How would he know what that meant? Anyone seen the new Roadhouse? I refuse. It's, I like JJ right, but, yeah, but... Digital action. It's, it's missing the whole point of the original. Yeah. It's I'm all just to stick together that. fights digitally to make it one long shot all the time and it just doesn't work. Hey, Jay's here. I have. <laughs> it's awful. So I'll see that on the J channel soon. I love you to a kill, and Vulcan is the huge part why. Fuck you. Boris won't die. Excess baggage had Vulcan and Alicia Silverstone, and that was pretty gack. <laughs> Can't blame that. King of New York, Deer Hunter with Robert De Niro, at close range with the Penn Brothers. There you go. Mm -hmm. Got live to tell me that was as Sean Penn was with Madonna, and it's just a great opening scene with Sean Penn driving into this small town, for, like a uh, acoustic live to tell. I love ah. it. <laughs> Subtle. Uh, do you think? Oh yeah. Do you think Sean Young would have played Vicky Vale better than Kim Basinger? That's a trouble with Sean Young. She. Uh, she was good in stuff because, like, she's in the original Dune, isn't she? In Blade Runner, and she was nearly Catwoman. But and then she was in was it Firebirds with Nicolas Cage? But I don't know. I think she could have done all right as Vicky Vale. I know Vicky Vale, the character in the comics, was a blonde, but Squeaking dogs. Someone told me to do it. I didn't even finish the movie. Oh dear, you have to watch it again to review it then, uh, Jay. All right, take uh, Eastwood, uh, Carlos. Although you've probably long gone. She did one called Day of Atonement. I don't remember liking it much. Doesn't ring a bell. Oh, he did one. Sorry. I thought we were still talking about. Uh, What's her face? Sean Young. I know he's in, is he in Dogs of War? An early 80s yeah. war film. Yeah, it's McBain. I like McBain. A lot of people hate it. I think it's the same as um the original Man on Fire. It's just might be too serious for some people for an 80s film. Hmm. Although was it 90 that like McBain came out? Yeah. Oh yeah, Sean, Sean... <laughs> So Sean Young wouldn't have worked as Vicky Vale. Although oh, oh poor gorgeous George. Tommy, why is your skin leaking? Oh sorry, if people can see the nudity inside inside the caravan walls. It's full frontal <laughs> as well. Uh Fight of your life, masters. I think are screwed. So it'll probably never be better. Don't think, yeah. More lost stuff. Looks good though, the DVD. Hmm. Because it's yeah, even the VHS is a pretty good definition. It's not. It's not a very widescreen film either, so that helps. Oh, it's an Irish wake. So that's going on for three days. Oh yeah, uh, Mark, Kate Bosworth and Margaret Kidder made terrible Lois Lanes. Oh dear. Margaret Kidder I don't mind, but yeah, Kate Bosworth was very bland. Yeah, a lot of Margaret Kidder. I don't know. Was she better than... Who was it? Who was in the, the Dean Cain Superman one? Terry Hatcher. Terry Hatcher, yeah. Maybe she was too good looking. Bollocks, I'm going for a I'll walk. Tell you, I'll tell you quickly about Terry Hatcher. Always springs oh, yes. to mind. 
where, where I work, there's an independent video store. It used to be called Prime Time. And I already won, won a bet on people didn't believe me. It's Jake Gyllenhaal on Day After Tomorrow. And then I was saying, it's Terry Hatcher in Tango and Cash. And we said, how can we prove it? It was before the like, internet. And we went down to Prime Time and we basically <laughs> pressured the guy in to put in the film on. And then walked the owner. He got sacked for it, for putting the film on. Oh. I actually sacked him. I felt, I felt really bad. He was only supposed to be playing a family-friendly film at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, was really, oh. it was a bit harsh, but no. I won £10 again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure his life on the streets didn't do him any harm. <laughs> Does Welcome have comedy white hair in any of his films like Tom Cruise and Mickey Rourke? Uh, I'm trying to think. Sleepy Hollow. <laughs> he's got white hair, I think. That's more serious. Um, i trying to think of comedies he's done. Wedding Crashes. Uh, yeah. Oh, yes. But he's, um, he's uh, what is he, the gangster on the ra- and witness protection in um, Joe Dirt. He's got white hair in that. Oh, I always yes. forget he's in that. Wonder if Fight for Your Life would be passed nowadays, given the reasons it was originally banned. It's it's not bad when you watch it now. The, the worst scene in it is the one with the uh, not give anything away with a child up on a grassy knoll. That's a that's nasty. But if you've seen things like in sickness and in health, love thy neighbour. It's it's nothing. The, the dialogue <laughs> in that film, it's really not. It's a, it's offensive, but yeah, you can see why it was banned. Okay. Okay. Fight for your life is excellent. Such a shame the film's elements got destroyed. I think it was due to flood or something. I remember correctly. Well, yeah, I guess that's another thing. Just because you've got a physical copy doesn't mean it's going to be safe from fire floods and everything else. Uh, oh, yeah. She, but she was supposed to play her. There you go. Gregor's here. Good evening, Greg. I guess, yeah. Welcome had white hair. It's, it's V to a kill. I think it was just very blonde. <laughs> yeah, sure did. Tranny. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that is hate speech. Oh, actually, I was talking about an old transistor radio, so that's all right. <laughs> Who's out of context? This is a family channel, yes. <laughs> Sorry. Watching a film called Snatch with the dog fighting in. We have a politician here in the Netherlands who has the exact same hair as Vulcan in a view to a kill. Well, you obviously can't trust them then. Uh, Snatch was basically the last movie our group of friends enjoyed as a group after partying on Fridays and Saturdays from 1992 to Reservoir Dogs up until 2000. All my friends <laughs> won the tape down that, of that one. Or out the tape. Well, I got a spare if you want it. There. <laughs> Sean wouldn't have worked. Okay. <laughs> no. Oh, Sean Penn. Um, Sean Penn, fucking. Sean Young. We've discussed Sean Connery, Sean Powell, Sean Young. Any other Sean's in the mix? The legend who is Gert Wilders. Oh, (laughs) is that the politician? Oh, yeah, that's the one. There you go. See those politicians in the country. I don't even know who Prime Minister of this one is. Uh, This is a great movie. The fact that life commentary is hilarious. Apparently, they used someone's wife's wheelchair for the film, so... She was then stuck in bed and couldn't go anywhere while they filmed. <laughs> You're right, but she is as much better actress than Bassinger. She always had that reputation of being difficult, didn't she, Sean Young, back in the day? But whether it was that or she just wouldn't do what <laughs> casting people wanted. There's a dog track near me, but I don't think I would dare go in there. <laughs> Surely it can't be bad. It's a family event. Yeah, maybe Cardiff has one. Might be closer. 
a dog track in <laughs> Bristol probably turned into an LGBTQ museum. <laughs> <laughs> probably is. That's, that's quite dry. Uh, Jason's here from Backtrack Cinema. Good evening, Jason. Yes, yeah, Sarah Ferguson. Do you mind? I'm a respectable man. There's a lot of Chavier. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of Chavier in Bristol, but we've had a few unfortunately fatal stabbings of teens recently. Uh, watching the last story of the anthology of Vault of Horror with Doctor Who's Tom Baker. Hang on. Vault of Horror, isn't it? Is it Tom Baker or is it the other guy? Pen Pertwee. There's a vampire in that. Hey, this is the first movie I saw Jason Statham in. Uh, I know, I've pretty lock stock, isn't it? I guess. It's his earliest work for. Because have you seen him? Videos on YouTube of him in his swimming days when he had hair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unrecognizable. Yeah, I quite, I quite like him. The, the only, say, other than the American accent, annoyed me was Hobbs and Shaw. It's really bad. The <laughs> acting in that way, shouting out the window yeah. is terrible. It should have been so much better having those two bit bicker between them, but I know he. Yeah. Did a Charles Bronson remake of The Mechanic. It was okay. Transporters, Death, uh, Death, what is it on? Death Race films, or the first one. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, he's in Collateral as the transporter character, apparently, when he picks up the suitcase in the airport. Um, of course, he's Monk and Mean Machine. Oh, that was after this, was it? Okay. Um, He's he's in the Shaman's music video coming on as a background dancer. He's in Erasure's Run to the Sun as a silver painted dancer. He's in the Beautiful South Dream a Little Dream music video as movie house patron. Yellow's music video as swimmer into the sea, and then Straight to Lockstock in 1998, and hasn't looked back. <laughs> Substitute Bristol with Brighton. Uh, these two are off on one again. Let's keep to the right of the track. Maybe at the moment, but Kim turned out to be a much better actor than Sean Young. There you go. I know. What's the last? I think, I think Sean Young's still making stuff because she turned up in uh, Blade Runner 2049, didn't she? De aged. She liked dags. Now, I saw the making of this earlier, and uh, the bit where, yeah, they had to. Mickey gets punt uppercutted and flies back. Mm -hmm. There's two shots. So they had him being lifted in the air and then flying back. And then another bit where he's on wires going back and lying down. And there's another shot with him. They filmed it underwater. <laughs> so you had to do it without breathing to get the, the shots they wanted. As you go. So it was like um, Guy Rich. He'd have a seemed to have a, a full mask, a mask on his head that you could hear Guy Ritchie's uh, direction, and then you had to take it off and then <laughs> do it just to get it right, so it looked right. <laughs> no one's forcing you to do it, but I know you will. Uh, welcome to Silverstone. We're also in Blast on the Past with Brendan Fraser. Yeah, I've not seen that. I've got him. It's supposed to be good. Don't mess with the OG. I have to disagree. I'm not going to. <laughs> Just kicking off. That's a funny film. I liked it. There you go. The new Beetlejuice might be okay, but I haven't really enjoyed Burton's movie since the original Beetlejuice. Oh, dear. I'm going to uh, see that one, actually. Beetlejuice. Definitely. No? No, I will go and watch it, yeah. Yeah. I'll wait and <laughs> see. Like I did with Ghostbusters. Well, it look it looks like from just the trailer, even down to kind of the, the set of the town, it looks okay. like it's still a model. I've got okay. a big thing against CGI. I mean like I watched the Furiosa trailer and I thought that just looks a mess. Yeah. Yeah, they missed what people liked about Fury because Fury Road of course, does have CGI in it. It's just 
it's good. It's not really noticeable. Yeah, that's the difference. Like people say that Top Gun Maverick didn't use CGI, but I don't think any scene with a Tomcat in it is real because they can't fly those things anymore. Mm. And all this, like the shot with him coming between two planes yeah. is too dangerous to, to do and stuff. So when it's good, it's done right. Same with Fury Road. Like that sandstorm was obviously fake, but <laughs> but yeah, Furiosa uh, will sound like it's going Expendables four. There you go. There's, a, there's the stitch shots then into the water. <laughs> like, put your left shoulder back a bit. Hold it there, right. Stay in that position. Yeah, go dogs of war with Dolkin and Tom Berger. See, I remember that from That's Life with Esther Anson, one of the men presenters on that. Got the opportunity to act in the film, and he's got a small part in Dogs of War. This is Chris Searle. Um, oh, yes, Christopher Walken is in The Rock's film The Rundown with a cameo by Arnie. Nice. Mm -hmm. But yeah, well, Christopher Walken was in. Well, he was in Western Supermare, I think, last year, because he was filming in Bristol that TV show he was doing with <laughs> the guy that wrote The Office, the UK Office. Stephen Merchant. Yeah, he had a TV show with uh, set in Bristol with uh, Christopher Walken in. Uh oh, now we're fucked. And then. <laughs> Music kicks in. No. He can't stand up. We're out of here. Was was it the boost with Young that had some controversy around those scenes? Hmm. Don't know that one. Tom Barringer. Anyone seen Rush with Rush It with him in from 79? Good flick. Doesn't ring a bell. I think I first saw okay. Barringer in like stuff like platoon or something. One was You're free, you know? yeah, platoon no? and then sniper. Sniper, yeah. Because there's about four or five of those films. I know he pops up in random ones. Yeah. For a uh, Dutch Ramon says for a very cool walk and performance. Check out the movie Pennies from Heaven with Steve Martin. He That's does a musical film. dance number that was. Inspired by the movies of Weapons of Choice video. Yeah, because he, he was a dancer and he didn't get to do it until, what was it, Wayne's World 2, properly. But yeah, no one's, unfortunately, Pennies from Heaven was a bomb. And, but yeah, then, uh, what was it, Bob Hoskins did it for the BBC, I think. A TV version of it. Nope. Bit of violence is happening. Dogs of War, Deer Hunter, yeah. I always think Terry Hatcher in that Seinsfeld episode, they are real and they are magnificent. <laughs> I, oh, that's offensive. <laughs> I think there are, there is a film that Terry Hatcher's in. Great story, Dan. Uh, yeah. Oh, you're... <laughs> yeah, we're back there. <laughs> yeah, Dan won't sleep tonight. Now, gotta find my local video store. Played Silent Rage. Me and my mate watched the entire film for free. <laughs> tisk tisk. Don't think my sh yeah my short shots were too small to have a video in. Firehead over Tango and Cash. He probably hates that film now, doesn't he? Yeah. Good job it <laughs> wasn't <my> local. <laughs> uh, it's a shame Terry Hatcher generated such hostile reactions. If she had been a nicer person, who knows how far she went. Shame with Sharon Stone. Does seem to be a thing, doesn't it? Do we believe them that they're not they go that the too old once you hit thirty or twenty five in Hollywood, you know, no longer wanted. But yeah. I think a lot of them turn into divas after their big hits, isn't it? Like yeah. Lois and Clark. And... The director of Tango and Cash also wrote, co-wrote 
Tarovsky's Andre Rublev. <laughs> a madness. Yeah, it was a Russian director, wasn't it? I think they were doing music videos back in those days. Ooh, here's the cops for the first time in the film. Some police actually turned up. Tom Pounder was a play in the fields of the law with John Lithgow and Kathy Bates. I remember that coming out. I don't think I've ever seen it. But yeah, I love Terry Hatcher and Tango Cash. Also her brief but memorable role in Tomorrow Never Dies when she's in her lingerie, I'm guessing, just talking about. And love Michelle Yeoh and all. But I do feel Terry would have been a good main Bond girl as well. Yeah, she was definitely advertised as being in it as a Bond girl. Spoiler, she's the last one. It's professor's funny. Not seen Russell. Is it worth a look? Fight for Life really should get through uncut now, but the censors seem to be tapping into the woke shit a bit too much now. See Mary Poppins. Yes, Mary Poppins is now not suitable for children. <laughs> for a word that no one knew what it meant until someone complained about it. Hello, Sean. It's hard to find, but you can get it online. Uh, random number of letters. <laughs> Do you like the How the Grinch Stole Christmas by Jim Carrey? Dan? This is a funny one because I absolutely love it when he's mean, but as he starts to come round, <laughs> no, I'll turn it off. I, I yeah. love it. Jokes disappear then, don't they? Yeah. I just... Yeah. <laughs> oh. But I yeah I used to watch it more, but because there was what is there the uh, Cumberbatch version now as well, isn't there? Yeah, it's kind of yeah. We've got we've got that. I haven't watched that. The daughter's watched it. No. Yeah, I watched. I saw it once, but yeah, it was all right. I can't stay long. It's good to be here. Well, we're going to be five minutes of the film left, or less than that now. We're going into the credits. Um, yeah, this one is hilarious. It is. It's a good one. It's a third Jason Statham movie, I believe. I think. I can't remember now. Well, like I said, it was definitely set, uh, Lockstock. I think it was then it was this, wasn't it? And Abby's back on the Concord. And it's finished. <laughs> Sean Hung's Funkel and Einhorn. <laughs> yeah. She's never remembered for a film that's become very problematic. Lace is out. Tommy on about missionaries going into the Amazon jungle to convert the natives. Oh, that always ends well. Every other film has happened in. Uh, do you like Spider Man 1 or Spider Man 2? <laughs> I like them both. Uh, yeah, them, uh, I prefer them to the newer ones, yeah. Yeah, because I thought we've had three Spider Men in uh, 20 years now. Gypsy yeah, Kids. Okay. And Gypsy Kids is spelled wrong. It's G Y S P Y on the credits. <laughs> Not that anyone's got that far. Looks decent, Russ. Okay. Check out the movie Eyewitness. Don't know that one. In the movie, London Jason Stone had hair. Okay. Uh, love the mean one par horror par uh, oh the mean one with the Grinch is that out? I can't remember was it out at Christmas was it? the mean one which was a Grinch parody you know, as a horror film low budget one okay yeah I forgot about it as soon as Christmas finished Terry Hatcher I just move it around real slow I can feel it going in yeah it's all the way in <laughs> that's in Michael Myers dreams every night when he's sitting on top of a uh, Stallone. Hobbs and Shaw was not bad, but I expected them better, yeah. So apparently this was so low budget that um, <laughs> they had like sandwiches, a few sandwiches for lunches. They didn't have trailers. And yeah. I think Brad Pitt had one and what is it they said? Uh, they're going to get protests by the rights activists on <laughs> how well how badly they were treated on this film. They had um uh fines 
if your phone went off or if you were too slow or you did something wrong, Guy Ritchie would find you. Uh, would that be Witness with Harrison and Sean? That's a great one. That's, that is a great one. That was up for Best Picture in 1986 at the Oscars. His remake of Burt Reynolds' Heat was shite. It was. Uh, I really didn't like Crank 1 or 2, to be honest. Crank 1's all right, but then they went mad with Crank 2. Yeah. Growing up, Jerry Lewis was our Jim Carrey. Let's get one thing straight right now. Statham is shite. Okay. <laughs> I could say he's hit and miss. Oh, look. There's an extra feature on this video. Or not. Yeah, it's making an omelette. It's a short film. I have to check that out. Right. In a shaman video. Okay, I will give you kudos for that. <laughs> All right, take care, Sean. Long gone. All right, Sean. What's the weirdest movie you've seen? Um, the Rise Ahead for me. <laughs> yes. Anything, pretty much anything. <laughs> David Lynch, isn't it? Um, yeah. Some wacky stuff. Some Matrix style video going on here. Oh, Naked Lunch. Yeah, I watched, I rewatched that last year just to see. And it is, yeah. You can tell me what's going on. Let me know. <laughs> oh, it's the guy from Robocop. Yeah. I'll watch that. I saw that in the cinema. Loved Burt Reynolds in Skullduggery and Stick with the late stuntman. Yeah. Dale Robertson, great stuntman. Michael Keaton looking ridiculously good for, I think, 73. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the <laughs> clip in the Oscars where Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito. <laughs> he, he's a great actor, Michael Keaton. I think a lot of people underrate him. Yeah. I mean, some funny stuff. I mean, you only got to go back and watch Dream Team. That's hilarious, that film. Yeah, I love Dream great. Team. Great. Uh, Mr. Mr. Mom, Mom, that's good. Yeah. Uh, what's the car one? Gung Ho. Gung Ho. Pacific yeah, Heights is a great film. Yeah, he's <laughs> mad bastard in that. Um, um, one not many people ever talk about is Desperate Measures. Desperate Measures. I was, thinking, if it, I was trying to think right. of Extreme Measures. That's the other one. Yeah, that's with Andy Garcia. He wrong, needs him alive yeah. for his son's operation. Yeah, it needs a Blu-ray release. Yeah, oh, yeah. I haven't got Wait, I was going to say, I need to rewatch that. <laughs> oh, yes. Carlito weighs his haircut. Or is it? Sean Penn's haircut is his afro. <laughs> 70s porn look, yeah. <laughs> Stephanie Crane. Substitute with Berenger. Good old school teacher one. Bad boys film, yeah. Uh, what is the best scene in Shaun of the Dead? Too many. Oh, it's got to be the, the, the record scene. Surely. <laughs> get the records out of the shit. Batman theme, chuck it. I can't imagine doing that when I like my movies. <laughs> yeah, what are you going to grab? I'll chuck all the show, Marvel show. ones. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Some of the newer ones. Uh, he was a three-time Olympian. Yeah, no one even mentions that anymore. He's Hollywood hard man now, isn't he? Baron is really piece of work in Betrayed. I'm sure that couldn't get made today. I think I've seen that many years ago. Oh, there's just put out the Blu-ray for Sid and Nancy with Gary Oldman. That's a fun film. Mm. It would take Terry over Sharon any day. I think I would as well. Yeah. <laughs> Brunette. Um... Me too, but wouldn't say no to both. <laughs> yeah. For a cup of tea, I'm sure you mean. Bob's betray. Oh, Bob betrayed, yes, about the clan. Oh, yeah. There you go. It's a hard watch. Okay. Betrayed is about the clan. Uh, the Grinch, like Bill Murray Scrooge, is way better when he's being horrid to everyone. Yeah. That's another thing. That's very true. All the funds when he's, they're both mean. 
teaching the children to hate was bollocks. Yeah. The th oh, what's that? Three of the weirdest and greatest films I've ever seen are Gozu. Oh, Takashi Mick, Mikey. I can never I've never heard it's <laughs> what is it? Mickey. Symbol. I don't know that one. And The Holy Mountain. Also oh, highly strange. recommended, of course. You seen any of those? Uh, I've seen the Holy Mountain. That was sent to me uh, ah. to review. I couldn't review. I thought, what is? What am I watching? <laughs> uh, yeah, random collection of images. Uh, do you feel all this PC shit is getting out of hand and everything is going to get cancelled? And then all of us old movie collectors are going to get grief. And I was going to say, yeah, hunted like a different vendetta, but owning it just like yeah. Stephen Fry's collection of uh, contraband, which is like what I see behind you. I think well, I'm going to get your weapons off if you first to get <laughs> problematic. Yeah. Well, that's that's why I have it have it all uncut. No <laughs> one can touch it. Yeah. I'll tell you some of the looks it. I got when when I bought Love Thy Neighbor and In Sickness and In Health together. In HMV, the looks I got from the woman behind the desk, I think, well, oh, you're yeah. selling it. I'm buying it. <laughs> and you're What's the Ed buying? <laughs> <laughs> wow, a real woman. <laughs> Be missing these. I don't think they're missing a full stops, but we'll see. Ah, oh, Larry, if <laughs> you missed Snatch and the film. Two losses for Larry tonight. Uh, watch <laughs> watch Heaven's Prisoners if you want to see Hatch Snatch. I'm guessing that was going to go. I knew there was a film, that's it, Heaven's Prisoners, where she shows more than she ever did as a stripper in Tango and Cash. Sorry, dancer. Anyone seen that bollocks film directed by Kevin Smith starring Justin Long Tusk? I'm not seen <laughs> I know it's <laughs> Yeah. He turns into like a bloody walrus in it, and it's just uh, strange. Bizarre. Yeah, I didn't, <laughs> didn't finish it, Russell. Yeah, I don't, uh, not many popular's. As much as I don't like Statham, he was the only thing in Expendables 4 threatening to hold it together. <laughs> he was the glue, because I can't remember who else. I know Dolph was in it. For a couple of scenes, that's about all I remember. And I was not Ice Cube, 50 cents in it, isn't he? Mm, Megan Fox. Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> that backfired, trying to get her in. Um, what should I think? Yeah, 50 Cent was in, was it? The prison film with Stallone and Schwarzenegger, wasn't he? Was in the sequel. Oh, was yeah. in the first one, isn't he? Escape plan. Yeah, that's it. Zardoz with Big Sean is, yeah, that's a weird one as well. A lot of 70s stuff, <laughs> which is very weird. Gung Ho is awesome. That it is. It wouldn't play today. Keaton was funny at the Oscars, yeah. <laughs> uh, and he was a great bad in Pacific Heights. He was. Who was it? Melanie Griffith oh, and yeah. Matthew Modine, I think. Was the... I think Mako's yeah. in that as well. He's always good. Uh, Jackie Brown, yeah, Keaton, because he's playing the same character as in uh, Out of Sight. Because they're both Elmore mm. Leonard films, but different directors. Zardoz, yeah. But to be fair, everyone <laughs> was great in that for me. Okay. Oh, that's Jackie Brown, which is good. One Good Cop with Keaton was good. Had a different title in the States, I think. I remember that, yeah. Um, and then there was My Life. He did with Nicole Kidman, where he finds out he's dying while his wife's pregnant, so he makes a load of videos for his son because he's not going to be around. So it's very sad. Jack Frost, it's a sad <laughs> one. <laughs> I only made it about a quarter way through that one. Um, but the paper's good. Oh, he's a newspaper editor when they had newspapers. The weirdest thing I've seen is single The Serial Emotions of a Donkey by Sadie Baby Walt Wall Insanity with memorable use of unlicensed Rod Stewart. <laughs> uh, one Good Cop is awesome. I need to rewatch that one. Keen the Trifactor. Clean and sober. Yeah, it's an amazing performance. What's the 
twenties gangster film he did in the eighties. Remember that one? No, I can't. I can't remember the title. Of no, it. I can't remember the bloody name of it myself. <laughs> oh, sexual emotions of a donkey. <laughs> Uh, God, the early 90s were full of psychos in houses, apartments. Yeah, single white female and Pacific Heights. And um, what's the Bruce Willis one? Color of Night. There you go, Pacific Heights, clean sober. It's hard to think what films Keaton is not good in. Yeah, he's one of those that's good if even if the film's bad, isn't he? What's the one hit in? The Mortary with Henry Winkler. Is that him? One of the early comedies. Uh, where does film oh, there's yeah. a video Nazi called Devil Hunter, which is really what the fuck mess of a shit show. <laughs> okay. In dark now. One good cop, of course. You know. Yeah, Holy Mountain is bad shit. <laughs> Everyone asked for a Dan's a, do a proper review, so he has to watch it again. Oh, no. <laughs> oh yes, or hunted down like Logan's run, yeah. Everyone laughed when Mike Michael Keaton got the Batman role, yes, and look what happened. No one could have has been better. Yeah, people what's it, fifty thousand letters Warner Brothers received. Saying it's a mistake. Can't have Beetlejuice in the Mat suit. We don't want camp. Three Gaten three great Keaton films you mentioned, Russell, yeah. Got a similar look from HMV when I, I bought Necromantic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised HMV saw that. Oh, that's it. Night Shift. That's the one with Henry Winkler. I think, is that directed by Ron Howard? Uh, skate film. See, people showing at me. Uh, Get Christy Love film. Uh, done that one. Johnny Dangerously. There we go. That's the one. So. Gangster comedy from the 20s with Joe Piscopo. <laughs> uh, Keaton was apparently offered the Venkman role in Ghostbusters. Ooh. There you go. Oh, yeah, yeah, night shift. Everyone showing night shift at me. Ah, there's Ben's here. Yeah, very late. Film's finished, but yes. We'll be doing. Where is it? Me and Ben, Miami Vice, tomorrow because they've had their ready break. Uh. <laughs> West was better. <laughs> Do a Keaton month, Gareth. Ooh. Let me try and work on a <laughs> snappy name for it. The ultimate Batman for me. Yeah, he's... All right, we've finally caught up. Facts, Jeff. <laughs> Johnny, Johnny's got his gun. 71. Did, a, did bad until Metallica brought the rights to the film and made it a classic after using it in their mini music video one. There you go. Don't know that one. Two different roles. Comedy Batman. <laughs> Wonder if anyone preferred Clooney as Batman. Well, people were excited when he appeared in The Flash, weren't they? Because after so many, what was it, reshoots, because it was going to be Keaton, then it was going to be, who was the other Batman? Kilmer or I think another choice was Adam West, CGI or something, but yeah. And they went with Clooney. That's my favorite Talica song, Ross. There you go. Easy. Keaton. <laughs> Keaton. The... Keaton Vember. <laughs> yeah. Rolls off the tongue. <laughs> I'll keep that in mind. Don't think anyone in their right mind would. There you go. Even he himself apologized for Batman and Robin. Yes, apparently, if you ask for your money back, or back in the day, he used to give you money. Johnny Dangerous with Michael Keaton has some funny break dancing and deliberated funny foreign accents. Oh, can't have funny foreign accents anymore. Unless they're Welsh. Right, we caught up. So, it's two hours and counting. Let's wrap it up. So, thanks for Dan for joining me. And when's the next Ooh, podcast? Oh, I thought it was today, but it's not, is it? It's, it's uh, early April now. Yeah, we got a live stream bank holiday one Friday. And Monday. Oh, yes, you're doing the double bill, aren't you? Monday, Friday and that Monday. should be fun. Yeah, and then uh, 8th, 8th of April is the next podcast of the Oxbow Incident, which was a film I did struggle through, but yeah, it's an interesting uh, review. There you go. 
Yeah, because it's one of, well, not that I'm a Western expert, but even I didn't recognize the name. <laughs> Let's still yeah. check that out. Oh, everyone's ah, thinking, right? Uh, Seagal was apparently almost Batman during his glory days. <laughs> I would pay money for that. <laughs> so, yes, good night, says Bob. Oh, dear, says Jeff. Night says Michael. Stay hard, stay heavy, stay metal from uh, Rusty. Great stream, Nathan. Have a great day, yes. Professor Macabro, all the way in America. So, was it 4 p.m. for him? Uh, night, everyone. Have a good one. Night, Larry. By the way, Dan, we've got over 2,000 views on our open range episode so yeah. far. There you go. So, uh, hang on. That deserves a round of applause. Uh... Hey, okay. well <laughs> Stop commenting, people. We're trying to get off here. Later, says Mike. Night, Bob. Oh, it's like bloody Waltons here. Uh, night, everyone. Oh, with Fonda. Oh, see, Ramon likes that one. Is it the one with Fonda? <laughs> See you tomorrow night. Yes, I will. Hopefully. Thanks. <laughs> Everyone loves some snatch. Great stream. Thank you. Just wait for a review. <laughs> there you go. All right. And on that bombshell. Good night. And um, Jeff says, see you Friday.